the truth the girls. Hi everyone, it's Sonia. Uh, excuse me if I seem a little off today. I'm suffering from a bad case of bloat. News bloat! Which is where you've been reading a ton of news and you haven't had the chance to uh, share it with anyone. So today I'm going to share all that news with you and that should take care of the problem. <laughs> so okay, what I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today was what is going on in Portland. Um, it's an absolute disaster. It's really quite a critical situation. It'll be very interesting to see how it turns out. Because I will say a lot about the state of America as a whole at this time. Before I start, I'd just like to ask you to like me please on Facebook. Even though, I gotta say, I'm probably gonna switch to Parler soon. I mean, I just have to set up an account because it's... Facebook is, um... They're basically trying to get rid of sites that share news. They call it spamming pages. Like pages like mine that share news. They consider that spam. And so they're doing everything they can to try to get rid of us. Uh, giving us strikes for sharing false or partly even partly false information. Uh, these strikes are uh, cumulative and they do not expire, which means that eventually you're going to get to the point of ending up in the red and they'll take your page down. Um, I've had six strikes since uh, April. That means six times I shared news accidentally, which was false or partly false. And, and that's put me already in the yellow. And um, the, the weird, the, I know this is a bit of a tangent, but I got to tell you about this. The, the weird thing about this is that it, you can even literally be sharing mainstream news, but you know how sometimes the mainstream makes mistakes? Like they might give it a number that isn't quite accurate or the way they broke down the number wasn't quite accurate. That alone is enough to count as partly false and to give you a strike. See how extremely dodgy it is. Anyhow, for the time being, please like me on Facebook, though. And uh, thank you for subbing to my backup channel, Truth or Girls TV. And thank you for your support on Patreon, which keeps my channel going. Um, one other thing before I start, I'd like to remind you, this is the time to prepare. Things are not getting better. And they're actually saying things are not going to go back to normal anytime in the foreseeable future. So if you're looking to get some supplies now for fall, this is what I would recommend. My Patriot Supply are the go-to experts in emergency preparedness. Right now, you can save up to $100 off a four-week supply of their delicious and nutritious food that lasts up to 25 years. But you might need it as soon as next month if things continue to get worse. Don't let yourself get caught unprepared. Not when you can get a four-week supply of emergency food shipped right to your doorstep. Go to preparewithtruthergirls.com right now. That's preparewithtruthergirls.com. So if you're interested, please click the link below and you do get a discount of $100 off um, a four-week supply of MREs. Okay, so let's talk about Portland. The whitest city in America, as it's known, is like the epicenter now of the protest crisis. So what happened? Well, of course, it started with um, the death of George Floyd. And like many other places, Portland started having protests. This progressed, as it did in many other places, to taking down monuments. They took down a George Washington statue and also a Thomas Jefferson statue. At one point, they also destroyed an elk statue. I don't think they have anything actually against elks per se. I think that the elk just kind of got caught in the crossfire. And so what happened on the 1st of July, the DHS announced a new task force to protect American monuments, memorials, and statues. They created the Protecting American Communities Task Force, also known as PACT. So the DHS created uh, this task force in response to the president's call to use law enforcement across the country to protect historic landmarks. The federal forces moved in with like their full stormtrooper gear and they, they started tear gassing and shooting rubber bullets. They even tear gassed the mayor at one point. That did not put an end to the situation. If anything, it fueled it. On the 26th, of June, President Trump passed an executive order on protecting American monuments, memorials, and statues and combating recent criminal violence. See, the power of the federal government is kind of limited. Like, the states are supposed to have a lot of autonomy and, and self-governance. So the federal government has to find ways to work around that. So since these are federal monuments and memorials and statues, they came up with I mean, the president came up with this, or whoever was helping him to draft it. They came up with this as a way to give themselves a reason, like a justifiable right to go in and do what they're doing. 
Anarchists and left-wing extremists have sought to advance a fringe ideology that paints the United States of America as fundamentally unjust and have sought to impose that ideology on Americans through violence and mob intimidation. Um, I actually did a video covering that, uh, the group Momentum, which is behind a lot of the protest movements that are involved in what's going on now. And they are left-wing. They'll admit it. I don't know about anarchists, but well, they, their goal was to try to fuel protests, to create polarization, to force people to pick sides, to take down the Republican Party and the Trump presidency. That was what they said in their documents. They have led riots in the streets, burned police vehicles, killed and assaulted government officers, as well as business owners defending their property, and even seized an area within one city where law and order gave way to anarchy. That, of course, was Chaz, also known as CHOP, where they took uh, six blocks, and within just a couple of weeks, like, four people had been shot in there. During the unrest, innocent citizens have also been harmed and killed. So this is where the federal government's coming from. And their view on the situation as of July 28th was that basically the anarchists are continuing to run riot in the streets. They're uh, engaging in nightly attempts to raise and damage the Hatfield Federal Courthouse. So they say DHS made the decision last week to put up a stronger fence around the building's perimeter. Following the rioters' repeated attempt to topple and breach the fence, DHS reinforced the metal fence with yet another layer of concrete barriers on the outside, which has prevented rioters from toppling it. However, rioters continue to throw hard projectiles, commercial-grade mortar-style fireworks, and Molotov cocktails over the fence in their unabated efforts to harm federal officers and destroy federal property. So that's the side of the story from the federal government's point of view. As far as the Portland mayor goes, he wants the U.S. agents blocked from Portland. The local government doesn't want them there. Mayors of Portland, Oregon, and five other major U.S. cities appealed Monday to Congress to make it illegal for the federal government to deploy militarized agents to cities that don't want their presence. So they're kind of at loggerheads here. So some of the other things that had happened was the local moms had come out in support of the protesters and had formed a wall of moms and they were tear gassed and shot with rubber bullets. They're now suing the Trump administration over this. The mayor is trying to use diplomacy, demanding an immediate meeting with DHS to discuss a ceasefire. Now, another part of this, which was something that Facebook had flagged as false news because it had been fact-checked as false news, or partly false, by Snopes, was the issue of the feds using unmarked vans and kidnapping, as they said, grabbing people off the street without due process, without telling them, you know, what was going on and what they would, were being detained or arrested for. That was the other part. And I am going to bring up uh, the issue of, of Snopes and the fact-checking because I went to check out what they had to say on it. Not that I rely on them, but I, I was curious to see their take. And they said it was partly false because there was no evidence that the federal forces had committed any crime, such as kidnapping, as in they had not been determined to have committed a crime by any courthouse or any kind of authority. So if, if you're from the federal government and you're in an unmarked van and you grab somebody off the street and pull their hat down over the face, stuff them in the back of the van, take them to that courthouse, never tell them what this is about. Or, I mean, that's not usually how you arrest people, right? But never tell them what they're being charged with even. Um, well, we can't call that kidnapping because it hasn't been called kidnapping by a court of law. No, it hasn't. But you know what? In, in common sense, when you do that to someone, it's tantamount to kidnapping as far as everyone's concerned. So, see, that, that's the problem with these fact-checking sites. See, this, we're talking semantics here. Was it, did it meet the legal definition of kidnapping? Maybe not. For all intents and purposes, was it kidnapping? I think so. And so then if you share the story of how people were getting grabbed off the streets, you get flagged as sharing fake news. And they might take you down. Well, it's not fake news. Washington Post reports that the Oregon... 
Attorney General is suing federal agencies for allegedly violating protesters' civil rights. How did they violate their rights? By seizing and detaining them without probable cause during protests against br police brutality last week. So the Attorney General Ellen Rosenblum said her department was also seeking a temporary restraining order to prevent federal authorities from unlawfully detaining Oregon residents. And they mentioned specifically the story of Mark Pettibone, who was detained by several men in green military fatigues and generic police patches on their clothing as he walked home from a protest early Wednesday morning. Pettibone said the men, later identified as CBP officers, searched him and then took him in an unmarked minivan to a federal courthouse where he was held for several hours. Pettibone told the Washington Post that the federal agents did not tell him why he had been picked up or provide a record of his arrest. So this is what people have been referring to as kidnapping. Um, apparently, uh, the attorney general thinks it's pretty serious, uh, doesn't think that it's false information. So even though the attorney general is filing a lawsuit over it, Snopes has decided that it is fake news. Yeah, we have a problem here with the fact checkers and it's gone it's really overstepped this isn't about just you remember back in the old days okay you remember back in the beginning when there were these real fake news sites out there like mcdonald's hamburgers are made from worm meat and that would get flagged and then they said oh it was the russians that were putting up these sites originally that was the fake news it was stuff like that so you were encouraged to just trust the mainstream news even though some people said yeah the mainstream news lies all the time you know here's the crazy thing like if you're sharing news online and you're like okay i get it don't share news from disreputable websites uh share stuff that's been double checked share yeah like cross-referenced share stuff from the mainstream media uh and and then you should be safe at least your site won't get taken down well now it turns out if there's any mistake or any disagreement or even any controversy, uh, now they call that fake news too. But yeah, it's like a trap now. It's like a snare that they're laying out there. You share an article about somebody getting kidnapped off the street and it's like, oh, you're sharing fake news. When there's a real story behind this, somebody really did get grabbed off the street. So what's happening now is Portland is hitting the feds with a $500 fine for every 15 minutes their fence stands around the besieged courthouse. We intend to collect, says City Commissioner Chloe U. Daly, who added that she was committed to doing everything in her power to end this federal occupation and move forward with our community's reckoning with racial injustice and our efforts to transform our approach to policing and public safety. So it's kind of like Portland, Portland knows that they have a reckoning to do. They, they know that they have a very racist history. I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. So they know this. And they, they want to just handle it the way they're handling it. And the federal government is like, that's, it's going to stop right now. You're going to stop with all this uh, activity, this protesting, taking down statues. It's going to stop. But what the feds are doing is fueling it. And this is why, for a long time, the feds held off from sending in um, these kind of troops. Because I think they knew that if they did that, it would just spark more protests and more protests in different places. It was a tough situation. Don't think that I'm saying I have the answers because I don't. I'm just giving you the story. So here's something very interesting. Uh, the racist history of Portland, the whitest city in America. It's known as a modern day hub of progressivism, but its past is one of exclusion. I'm going to sum it up, but I think you should go and read this article. But basically, Oregon, which still uh, is vastly um, dominantly white, and Portland, um, in particular, 72.2% white, which is high for a city. Um, so Oregon, actually, back in the day in the 1800s, they had a, a rule or a law that they would not allow black people to reside within their borders. Well, then with the passage of some amendments to the Constitution, it became illegal to forbid black people from moving into the state but it was still very inhospitable to them and had an extremely high clan membership. They actually also say um, the state had the highest per capita clan membership in the country. And later what happened was um, in the city of Portland, they, they had to let some black people live there because they were working as porters and other things and they were essential. So they allowed them to live in this area called Albina. 
eventually uh, black people were moving into Portland but there was only one place where they were allowed to buy homes um, after in 1919, the Realty Board of Portland had approved a code of ethics forbidding realtors and bankers for selling or giving loans to minorities for properties located in white neighborhoods. So they literally had a racist law that they, they had to live in a separate neighborhood. As black people moved into the neighborhood called Albina, whites moved out. By the end of the 1950s, there were 23,000 fewer white residents and 7,000 more black residents than there had been at the beginning of the decade. So it became a black neighborhood. And it was like this particular neighborhood was so systematically oppressed for, you know, just forever, for this whole time. Eventually they realized though that this area, which was inside the city itself, should be worth a lot more. And so what they did was they decided to gentrify it. The prices, the value of the property went up and then the, the original residents couldn't afford it. They moved out. And as more white people in, moved in, then suddenly uh, the city took interest in the neighborhood. So the black residents said, hey, the whole time we were here, uh, this, this place was a complete disaster. And now all of a sudden you got white people moving in and now suddenly you're interested in fixing up the neighborhood. Anyway, Oregon has, and Portland specifically, has a very long history of oppressing black people. Let's be real. They actually do. Um, and the protests though now if you look at who's protesting it's mostly white people because it's mostly white people who live there and actually just because people are white doesn't mean that they're okay with how people who are not white are being treated i i think a lot of that is actually just genuine anyhow that's what it is now they're basically reckoning with their long history and they have a lot of stuff to sort out and what's going on between them and the feds it's really going to come down to what the courts say whether it's even legal uh, what the feds are doing and that's it. Well, let me know what you think. We'll see how this turns out Leave me your comments. Uh, thank you very much for your support on patreon Don't forget to check out the link for the MREs. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time Sweet.